Um, so, you guys live in different states. How does it work to be one group living in different states? Well, we, we do so much traveling together that, um, you know, as far as practicing goes, if I need to, if we, if we get a new record out and we need to practice, then I'll just go to Florida. I have a house in Florida as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I'll just stay there for a week or two. We'll practice and then go out and do shows, you know? So it's, it's really not difficult. We fly everywhere. Um, for most of our shows, or if I need to, if we need to do a bus tour, then I just fly to where the bus is going to be at. They'll fly, and we'll stay there and, and do the bus tour, and then come back home. So it's it's not difficult at all. And plus, with technology, I mean, come on, like you're in freaking Netherlands, and we're we're talking right now. You know, we can write a song right now if we wanted to. You know, I, last time my last song I wrote was with my producer who's in Orlando, right. and I'm and I'm here, and we wrote it through Skype. Yeah, yeah, that, that's so, great. Uh, so, will you guys ever go solo or do a solo record? Um, I've done like five solo records before Group One even started, so it's in me to do solo music. But I don't even, I don't even think about it. All right. I'm I'm fully focused on Group One crew, and obviously Blanca could go solo if she wanted to. I don't know if it's really Pablo's more behind the scenes kind of guy. He doesn't really, you know, he's not really the um, I want to be a solo artist kind of guy. And, but Blanca could easily, and I could easily, but I don't even entertain those thoughts right now because you know I do solo music still to this day, but it's more for therapy, uh -huh. and I just I'll do it and I'll give the music away. Like the Mr. iTunes guy song, it was that. anger, putting your anger, frustration in it. <laughs> yeah, I'll just and I just give that music away. Whoever wants it, I just give it away because it's, it's just it's just for the people, you know. Like I, I make music for the people. And, I can't charge for it. I can't make money off of it because I'm with Group on Crew. So, so literally, what, I, where, where can people get your solo stuff then? Or where do you put it out? Or um, a lot, I had this one thing on on this past February for Valentine's Day. I gave people a bunch of music, so they came in and they just signed on to our website and put their email, mm -hmm. and it it downloaded to their computer. And then one time, I just had a day where I was like, "Hey, if you send me your email, I'll send you my my, you know, I'll send you 15 songs for free." And I just literally sat there and I copy and pasted a bunch of songs. And then I just tell them, pass it around. Keep you know, forward it. Forward it to all your friends. So like if you want if you want Manny music, give me your email. I'll send you Manny music and you can freaking tell all of Netherlands, hey you guys want Manuel music, go to our website, download it, it's right there. I'll hold you to that. I'll hold you to that. I'll get my email for you, Andy Hale and Jeff to you. <laughs> email it to me and I'll send you I'll send you like 20 songs alright that would be great that would be great Let, let's talk a, a little bit about the spirit, spiritual side when, when you look at the past year what's your biggest life lesson you've learned I think the biggest life lesson I've learned is that when there is nothing in this world too stronger than your mind and deciding to do the right thing I feel a lot of times we as Christians make a lot of excuses, I being one of them, uh, making excuses as far as our compromises. Mm. You know, I compromise because I'm sad. I compromise because I'm lonely. I compromise because I'm a guy. This is how guys are built. So we compromise because this is our, our, this is our, our you know, thorn that we have to live with. Mm -hmm. And then God reminded me that, man, you are a king. You have authority over everything. Mm -hmm. You are smart enough to not sin. You just choose to sin because all of us do when our flesh leads us away. And so what I learned was that, man, if I want to be a holy man of God, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to choose to be and then just do it. Mm -hmm. It's this simple. It's very simple. For men, if you struggle with sex, And with your girlfriend, guess what? Break up with the chick, delete her phone. Do it in love. Do it in love. Hey, I can't handle myself. Obviously, we're not handling this right. So we can't be together. And I may delete you on my phone so that, that way I can detox. You know? Yeah. If, if, if Facebook is becoming a problem, you know? Hey, there is not a law in this world that you're supposed to be on Facebook. Cut the freaking Facebook off. Cut it off. You know, that's extreme, but some people need that. But yeah. don't people don't want to do that because it, it means a total shift in your life. Yeah. So I'm like, huh, uh, Facebook leads me to sin, but I really like being on it. Which yeah. one is it? 
you're either gonna like the Bible says, cut the right eye. If the if your right eye causes you to sin, cut it out. Yeah. So if Facebook causes you to sin, get rid of it. If the internet causes you to sin, get rid of it. You know, yeah. just do it. If you need to get on the internet, you know, get on your wife's freaking computer so that she monitors it. You know, yeah. anywhere you go, she's gonna know. Get on your your parents' computer that has all the restrictions on it, or put the restrictions on yourself. You know, like there's a lot of things that you can do. And when I realized that I had all the power, that I was letting the enemy just kick my butt, that's when I was like, you know what? Like, you can't beat me, enemy. Like, you are already beaten. It's me who allows you to have victory in my life. Mm -hmm. So we went through a hard time within the group. You know, we lost Pablo for a little bit. You know, he had to go take care of some stuff in life and in himself. Mm -hmm. So when that happened, it really hit me like, you know what? Like... I, sin can get a hold of anyone and it can freaking ruin your life yeah. and I'm not, yeah. I'm not going to be that guy so I literally went through this phone I deleted every person men or women that didn't add to my life that did not bring a better understanding of who Jesus was in my life I went to my Facebook I went to my MySpace delete, 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 delete deleted everything and everyone I have an accountability system of like four or five pastors and friends that I don't make any decision on anything and that's i consult with each person and they all give me the green light mm -hmm. so um i think that's what i learned the most that the power is in me mm -hmm. that the godly god has given me the power to succeed in this life if i choose it yeah. i have to choose it i have to want it yeah. i can't sit around and act like i'm the victim because i'm not yeah. you know it's not like there's a big cosmic game that jesus is playing that you know, that, that, yeah, that the devil's winning and he's just letting him win. No, I let, I let the enemy win. Yeah. I let people do stuff to me. I put myself in situations. I don't aimlessly end up in a girl's room. Oh, my God. How did I get here? Oh, it was Satan. He put me in the car and he drove me to the girl's house. Now I'm here. Jesus, woe is me. You know, we be giving Satan way too much credit. Just admit it. It was you. You were feeling lonely, you were feeling horny, you wanted to go hook up with a girl. Yeah. Period. Be honest with yourself. And that's where I was at. I was like, yeah. dude, you are compromising because yeah. you lack vision. Yeah. You cannot see the promises that God has for you so that so so then you compromise. Because I cannot see my wife right in front of me, I think she's so far away. So yeah. why not enjoy momentary pleasures until she gets here? Yeah. But she will never get here if I continue to treat myself like a whore. Yeah. Sin? Amen. So at that point where I'm like, I am a child of God. I'm a man of God. I have to treat myself like a king. I have to respect myself so that when I do meet the woman that God has for me, she will see that I am treating myself with the utmost respect. And that in turn will allow me to treat her with the utmost respect. Because if I don't treat myself... Mm -hmm. as well as I'm supposed to there is no way and this is even biblical the Bible says you treat someone you treat your wife like you want to be treated love her like you love yourself yeah. you preserve yourself you'll do anything to make sure you stay alive yeah. that's how you're supposed to love her yeah. so you know that's something that I had to learn man it was my choice my decision and I had all the power to make myself or to allow God to make me into the man that I was supposed to be yeah. you know Thankful for grace that he gave me that, that opportunity. You know, now I got a fiance and I'm getting married in two months. So. Oh man, man! Then you'll get get. I'll give you the secret marriage club codes. I've been yeah. married 15 years, man. You've been married 15 years. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. That's great. You look mad young too. <laughs> the jeans. <laughs> no, just just joking. So so. <laughs> Wait. Ah. Uh. Yeah, focus. Um, <laughs> the past year, through that life lesson, what was your favorite Bible verse? W what did you read? Did you read Galatians or did you read, what did you read? There's been a life verse that I've stuck with and it's, it's encouraged me every step of the way. And it's Philippians 1, 6 and it says, Be confident in this, the work I have started in you, I will complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. And it hits me so hard because it's just like God promising, look, I'm going to work on you until Jesus comes. Yeah. Like, you're not going to fully arrive. We don't, we don't arrive until 
we, we meet in the sky with Jesus, then, you know, our bodies change, everything changes, we're gone, it's a different story. But until then, we have to deal with us. We have to deal with the fact that we were born into sin. It wasn't our choice to be born into sin. We were born into it with all these infallibilities that our bodies have, with these cravings, with this flesh. And so God promised that he was going to keep working because he understood that this is a lifelong thing. Yes, you are saved, but the Bible says work out your salvation with fear and trembling, meaning like you're you're saved, but it ain't going to be easy. Yeah. You know, because this this world isn't safe. So it, it feels good to know that no matter what happens, as long as I keep trying, mm-hmm. God God isn't gonna give up on me, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The only way it's gonna the only way I'm gonna fail is the day that I stop. You know, and, and, and that's comforting. That's comforting to know that it's not about my abilities to be right more than I'm wrong or win more than I lose, but my humility to accept the fact that Losing will come, and when it does come, I invoke the the love of a savior because that's that was why he's he came and died for me. You know, it wasn't so that I can get everything right; it was so that I would have the opportunity to know him and and get to know him for the rest of my eternity. You know, it's relational; it's love. It's not it's not winning and losing or sinning and not sinning. It's just I want to be with you. Yeah. You're my son. I made you, I created you, I just want to be with you forever. And here's how we can get to that. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. So. Manuel, thanks so much for, for just taking the time to talk to me and everything.